been three unrelated American car companies called Cunningham. The first being the short-lived Cunningham Steam Wagon of 1900 and 1901. The second, the luxury Cunningham Automobiles of 1908 to 1931. Early versions were what were called assembled cars, meaning Cunningham built the chassis and finished the car with components from other manufacturers. Expensive cars built to customer order, your choice of gas or electric. By 1911, they were building complete cars, built by hand, to customer order, in very small numbers. They would be the second manufacturer to offer a V8, following Cadillac. But $10,000 custom-built cars was a market that vanished with the stock market crash of 1929. One of these cars, however, would be owned by a Briggs Swift Cunningham II, creator of the third Cunningham Company, as well as a pilot, and racer of yachts and automobiles, and one of the founders of the Automobile Racing Club of America in 1933, which would later become the Sports Car Club of America, or SCCA, in 1944. He was one of the leading amateur American sports car and road racing drivers of the era, and like many others, he usually raced in MGs. He had been exposed to street racing at an early age, in his uncle's Hispano Suiza-powered Ford Model T, an influence that would lead to such race cars as a modified Buick Century with a Mercedes SSK body that would place at Watkins Glen in both 1948 and 49, and his involvement in the custom-built Fordalax, or post-war Cadillac-powered Fords. But after failing to get the Fordalac approved by Le Mans organizers, he instead entered two actual Cadillacs, one stock-bodied and one custom-bodied which the French press dubbed the Clumsy Puppy and the Monster, two giants in a field of purpose-built sports cars. Cunningham drove the Monster himself, and after crashing into a sandbank and having to dig the car out by hand, fought his way back from 35th place to finish 11th overall, right behind the stock-bodied Cadillac. Perhaps not the results he was hoping for, but he did return American cars to Le Mans, and establish what would become American racing colors, blue on white. And it would lead to Cunningham setting up a factory in West Palm Beach, Florida, to begin building race cars of his own. The first being the C1, built on a custom-designed chassis with a 105-inch wheelbase, and the Cadillac V8. It did not compete at Le Mans, but it did come in fourth at the Mount Equinox Hill Climb, although it was little more than a prototype and was quickly replaced by the C2. The C2R used the same body, with independent front suspension made with Ford parts, dd rear suspension with Oldsmobile springs, and Cadillac brakes with improved ventilation. Power was changed to the Chrysler Firepower Hemi, with four one-barrel carburetors, and higher compression pistons raising output from 180 to 250. The cars weighed about 3,400 pounds, all three were entered in the 1951 Le Mans, with two taking too much damage to finish, and the third holding second for most of the race, only to fall back at the end due to engine trouble and finish 18. But they would dominate the U.S. road racing circuits, taking first and third at Elkhart Lakes Road America, and first, second, and fourth at Watkins Glen. The C3 of 1951 to 1955 was the production version, whose sole purpose was to qualify the other models as homologation specials. Wheelbase was up to 107 inches, overall length was 168 inches, and weight 3,500 pounds. The first two, considered prototypes, used the C1 body. All others got Italian coachwork from Turin, making them easily mistaken for a Ferrari of the period. Transmissions were a Cadillac 3-speed manual or a Chrysler Prestomatic effectively a four-speed semi-automatic. The Chrysler Hemi was sold in various tunes, with estimated horsepower ranging from 250 to 320. At introduction, prices were $8,000 for the coupe and $9,000 for the convertible, prices that would nearly double by the time production ended in 1955. Twenty-five complete C3 cars were made, not including the two early versions, and 14 additional chassis. The C2R was criticized for being too big, so the C4R was 5 inches shorter, 4 inches narrower, 
on a 100-inch wheelbase and more than 900 pounds lighter. It had revised rear suspension, bigger 16-inch Chrysler fin drum brakes, and a new 5-speed manual. The modified Hemi was up to 300 horsepower, but to run at Le Mans, compression had to be lowered to run on the fuels available, and the 5-speed had to be replaced by the more reliable 3-speed. Two convertibles and one C4RK coupe were made. One took fourth overall at the 52 Le Mans, behind two Mercedes and a Nash Healy. It was considered the fastest car on the track, holding off the Jaguars and Ferraris with conservative driving, and Cunningham driving 20 of the 24 hours himself. For 1953, they got 7th and 10th at Le Mans, 1-2-3 at Road America, as well as 1st at the Sebring Main Race. Then they got 3rd and 5th at Le Mans in 1954, and first at Watkins Glen. The C5R used torsion bar suspension with solid axles, was 30 pounds lighter and had 10 fewer horsepower, an even bigger 17-inch brakes, and a Fiat Seata truck 4-speed, allowing it to beat the two C4s at Le Mans in 1953 for a best-in-class and third overall behind a pair of Jaguars. The media dubbed the car the Smiling Shark, but by this point, Cunningham was losing interest in the big American engines. The C6R switched to a 2.9-liter Offenhauser inline 4 with 270 horsepower, backed by a ZF 4-speed. Both engine and transmission failed at the 1955 Le Mans, and the car was regularly beat by the older Cunningham models on U.S. circuits. After repeated engine failures, a Jaguar straight 6 was installed. Cunningham production ceased after five years, and 35 cars were made. Briggs Cunningham would continue racing into the mid-1960s, and continue to enter Le Mans, racing Corvettes, Jaguars, Maseratis, and Porsches, which was nothing new for him, as in 1949 he had the first U.S. team to race a Ferrari, and entered one of the first Aston Martin DB2s in the 1950 Sebring race. In fact, his racing team would continue fielding other manufacturers while he was making his own cars, usually in classes that didn't compete directly with the Cunningham cars, but it did include a Ferrari 375 MM in the 1954 Le Mans that didn't finish. As a manufacturer of road cars, Cunningham wasn't even a blip on most people's radar, but Briggs Cunningham was a supposedly amateur racer that took things to unprecedented levels that could not be ignored in the early 1950s. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe.